ever play chess, General? Or, um... <laughs> do you want to play video games? Ooh, me? Welcome to the green side of life, baby! I scheme out plans in my sleep. You couldn't possibly keep up. I'll be done with you in time for lunch. The more toxins, the better. Oh dear. I hope they didn't have any grand plans. Ever watch someone's face as a rock is approaching? It's wonderful. Blinded by our hubris, we fail to see the ghosts from the past rising anew, sworn to end our supremacy. We are now besieged from all sides, all that we stand for at risk. Your mission is just the beginning. Welcome back, General. So we're actually entering the game already from David's perspective. Like I said, we joined mid-progress. It's anyone's game at this point. Right now, Earhart is scouting, looking for any sort of advantage, and he's now just discovering Krauss's unit there. He loses that scout, no big deal there. It looks like he's control grouping all of his units right now. As you guys just saw, the GLA tunnel network is going down. This will help transport his units from the main base straight to the middle of the battlefield. Yeah, he's taking a risk here. He smells an opportunity. He's got more units out in the field. He's scouted that middle map. He knows where to go. He also knows he needs to get in close. Uh, Nitro is a very close-up melee-type explosion, General. Now, as you guys see here, he just blinded the opponent here, making it easy for him to close the gap right there and use the detonation to his advantage. He's using the nuke trucks with the Nitro boost to close that gap. Yeah, you can say Earhart has a need for speed. He absolutely needs that because Cleaver has a definite range, range advantage. And it looks like the Toxin Choppers are doing a great deal here, just chipping away at the damage here since he doesn't have any good anti-air. Yeah, at this point, Krauss is falling behind. He needs reinforcements. His initial wave was not enough. He's falling back right now. He finds those reinforcements, looking for a choke point to gain an advantage. And it oh. looks like he's going to be casting a new little play of power we call Nuclear Liberation. Yeah, nuclear if he doesn't liberation. get out of the way, this is going to be devastating. Yeah, Nuclear Liberation is going down right now. He's trying to move. Is he going to get enough out of the way? He does not get out of the way. He takes a brunt of damage there, massive damage to his whole forces. And it looks like Earhart is actually going to take it to the railgun tanks there. Since he doesn't have any anti-air right now, they're just getting chipped away. But we do have we do have Kraus invading actually the back of Earhart's base. I don't know if he's noticed it yet. Yeah, there it is. And my man in the blue is taking it to him. It looks like the command center will go down. The GLA workers are moving away to their expansion base. Yeah, he's running as fast as he can away. He gets scouted there. Kraus knows absolutely what he's up to. Player power is going down. It, it has to be a fuel bomb. And it is. And boom goes the dynamite. Causing massive devastation to that whole base! It looks like Earhart's trying to sell his structure to recoup some of the costs that he just lost right there. Man, I'd love to be at that garage sale, but I think it's too late. I don't think he can buy a win here. He's surrendering. That's it. GG! Join us for an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at the next installment of the most celebrated RTS franchise of all time. This is Command & Conquer Beyond the Battle Part 1. When our community installs the game, they start to play it. Our veterans, the people who've been with CNC since 95, when they install the game and they start playing, all I really want from them is to go, holy crap, this is Command & Conquer. This feels like a Command & Conquer, a classic Command & Conquer game. It feels like Generals. So the core concepts in the original Command & Conquer um, RTS games were really about building a base, defending that base, and building an assault army that you could go attack the other base. First thing we said is we need to kind of wash the stain of CNC4 away. 
And to do that, you really have to get back to your roots to get back to what it was that made your fans your fans in the first place. Well, to me, the roots of Command & Conquer are always about base building that doesn't feel like a chore, harvesting that doesn't require your full attention, and a, a focus on fast action and lots of viable strategies in the, in the actual combat. Going back to upgrades and abilities that matter, player powers that feel visceral, and then at the same time, super weapons, commando units are back, and then we're adding a couple new flavors in there, like caster units, that we haven't exposed yet to the public. Well, we're all big Generals fans here, obviously. Looking at the old Generals, there's so many great ideas, so many great mechanics that they built in, so we were lucky to be able to cherry pick the ones we like the best. Now choosing the General is a big part of the game, just as important as choosing the faction you wanted to play. Now, you know, it's like having hundreds of factions, let alone just three. Each general will have its own set of abilities, uh, upgrades, even player powers will change as well. Uh, also, units will be dynamically taken out and different ones will be put in based off of what that niche of the general is. The new generals that we're adding to the armies are really gonna keep the gameplay fresh, right? It should, it should make the game fun, enjoyable, and, and you know, interesting for years to come. So what I really find exciting about the next Command & Conquer is that this is a product that's going to be aimed directly to consumers, going directly to consumers and appealing to them uh, for the success of the product, but more importantly for uh, the feedback. So fan feedback and metrics are absolutely amazing now in a connected environment. In the past, we just made a game, we put it in a box, we got the feedback years later, uh, we could make a change in the sequel. Today, we hear the fans immediately, we can look at the data, we can change stuff daily, weekly, monthly. We can engage in this sort of ongoing conversation with our fan base, where if, you know, say there's a general that we put out that we didn't balance quite right, we will get that feedback immediately. It's not like we're gonna be like, okay, well, when we do the expansion pack or in a patch in three months, we'll fix this. It's gonna be one of those things where we kind of grow together. And that's what we want to kind of breed. It's, it's a live product, and we want to make sure that the community at the core is part of that rendition of making this game better. This is ultimately the fans' game, and we're looking forward to making the game better with them. Absolutely, I'll play the new Command & Conquer when it comes out. Um, I'm anxiously awaiting it, actually. Our number one priority has always been to make this a really fun, excellent game. Everybody on the dev team loves the game, and they're doing the work where they're hard at. So a lot of the times people stay late just to make sure that they make a better game because they care about what the franchise is. Everybody wants to make sure that they make the game that the community would love, and we're on the same page on trying to make it the best CNC possible. Hopefully after doing this, I'll be on the beta, right guys? So it's really fun to work in the Generals universe. We look back at, at where the original game was and some of the fun unit ideas they came up with and we think like, how would the GLA have modified this bomb truck idea? We wanted to basically take some classic Generals 1 units, upgrade them a little, give them a little more oomph. So the GLA nuke truck in Command & Conquer is a combination of two vehicles from the original Generals, GLA bomb truck and the GLA nuke convoy. So it was a real fun one to reimagine in Command & Conquer. Everyone touches a different component and they add personality and they develop the character of the unit as they go along. So a unit begins with the design team. We're sitting in a room coming up with units for a specific faction. So we'll write up a basic brief for it. It is a nuke truck. It is a truck with a nuclear weapon that self-destructs. We will prototype the unit with gray boxes, you know, repurpose start, whatever, just to see if the concept actually works within our game engine and our gameplay. And from there, it lands in the art department's hands. We start in the concepting phase, and for us, uh, we concept in a 2D form just because it's easy to uh, rapidly iterate. When we arrive at what we feel is a very successful concept, it goes to the modeling team. One thing we want to make that truck, you know, make the original player remember, you know, recall the memory, hey, that's a GL, a new truck I played 10 years ago. Basically, we want to, you know, maintain the basic shape of the original one, original general one, and we kind of like spice it up, you know, to make it more sexy and make it more modernized. You may get this wonderful design, this wonderful model from the modeling team, and in your mind, automatically, you see it in your mind how it's gonna behave inside the game. 
again, we had this initial conversation with design. We tried to understand what was the scope of, of the unit, what it could do on the battlefield, and then we came up with an animation list. And the animation list included a speed boost, and so we created an animation that you know specifically like makes this unit jiggle a little more and as it charges against the, uh, your enemy base. And then we created all the hit animation and all the move animation and so on and so forth. My job as a visual effects artist is to make people just sit back and go, awesome. I get with my art director and figure out what exactly we're gonna do. There's some more back and forth between us and design, then I start. This is a nasty stolen nuclear technology that they don't really know quite how to operate, but they do know barely how to operate. They know how to get it running, how to make it dangerous. So in addition to the normal sort of classic nuclear mushroom cloud, there's gotta be some some slop in there as well, some dirty radiation, some, some nastiness thrown up. Yeah, for a unit, we normally get some of the concept art early on, and we start creating some uh, basic ideas of like, okay, this is gonna be a bigger unit, so we need to get some bigger explosions. For the nuke truck, we, we did not explode a nuke, unfortunately. Uh, the world probably thanks us for that. But yeah, we did find uh, some cool explosions that have been recorded and mixed in, processed those in a certain way that when it explodes, it feels good. A few months later, the, uh, the art assets come back. They're all rigged and animated and fully textured and beautiful. And then we plug those into the game and we're able to play with them right away. The new truck in particular is one of our high-end units. So balancing its cost is interesting because you only get to use it once. But at the same time, it's so tremendously powerful that, uh, that it, it can't be a cheap thing. I mean, it's a nuclear bomb strapped on the back of a dump truck. So. We have to price it accordingly, and then we have to make sure that the technology investment is sufficient to reflect how good it is in the game. So my personal favorite strategy for the nuke truck is to use it in a kind of a flanking move, where you'll advance on your opponent's base from one angle while secretly gathering a good collection of nuke trucks at a different angle. And while you're distracting them with the, you know, with your main attack, sneak in the nuke truck from the side and just annihilate whatever flank you attack. So one of uh, the key strategies I use the nuke truck for is when I scout out an expansion. I know two, three of them can take out the entire expansion. So what I do is just send over those three, uh, get one, kill all the workers, and send the other two to kill the structure. We've had great reactions so far. There's a lot more to come, and I cannot wait for the players to get their hands on it.